I really had fun last week talking about some ways to prevent circling around when you're adjusting your pants pattern to fit you. So I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about the circling around part, and then I was thinking about a crotch curve and whether or not you can adjust it like a steering wheel, meaning pulling it this way and that to get it to hang properly. And I've done a lot of experimenting with this, and the answer is you can to a certain extent. So what I want to talk about today is why it's important to be able to adjust the front and back crotch curves on both ends. So from the waist and from the crotch extension. When I prep my pattern to fit pants for myself or for students, I have them add an inch of fitting allowance to the inseam. Doing this gives you the opportunity to extend those crotch points and also add room along the inseam if you need it versus just sewing it up at a half an inch or five eighths and then being sort of landlocked there. So let me just show you what I was thinking about in terms of the circling, the circling around or the adjusting your crotch like a steering wheel. I have my little friend here. Um, this is my size six full body dress form and I put a half muslin on it to show you a few things and why the crotch curve is more than just a curve or an edge or a line. So what I want to do here first is I've got these two um, legs here and I'm just going to dash out a basic seam allowance. Okay, and what I want to show you here is, I'm going to just cut out this one. So this is essentially my crotch. And if I tape it together, and I'm just going to overlap the seam allowances here just a little bit so I can get a realistic shape. I think sometimes people look at this shape as an independent shape they're trying to fit around their body. And the problem is this crotch shape can be adjusted by, you know, sliding it around in either direction. So like if I were to put or draw a line on this paper, I'm just going to draw a line right here. We're going to pretend this is our inseam. All right, so let me just tidy this up a little bit. I'm going to take a couple of my so tight boosters to hold that in place for me. So I'm also going to highlight the inseam here. So that's the top of the pants, right? So when we're working with the single leg muslin separate waistband and we're using the basic steps of top down center out, what we're doing is we're adjusting it from the waist. And what I want to show you here is we can pull it back and forth from center front and center back and we can get the fabric to hang properly. Now, whether or not we can get it to hang properly by pulling it from the top waistline and get it to fit against your body depends on one simple fact or one simple thing. Does the crotch curve agree with you? If it does, if, if the crotch shape agrees with you, you should be able to, you know, pull it up, get it up where you need it to get, and it will hang properly. So what happens when the crotch curve does not agree with you, you start pulling it either up in the front or up in the back. And I just want to show you, like if I pull it up in the front, I'm going to draw a new angle. What is my inseam doing? So technically you're pulling your inseam along with it. So like if I draw my inseam like this, you can see pulling up the front will pull at the inseam and it changes the angle of it. So the extent to which you can pull it back and forth like a steering wheel is going to depend on how much 
you can get the pants to hang straight without pulling it too far to the front or too far to the back and causing the inseam to rotate. Now, if the inseam pulls, what's happening? I'm going to go make this one step farther. I'm enjoying this little thing here. Let me see if I can draw a back leg. Okay, and then let's do the front, a front leg. So let's say that that's our leg. So if you're, if you're pulling the front up and you're pulling it up too much, what's happening is if this is swinging this way, well, so is the entire back leg is swinging to the front because you're pulling the whole thing to the front. Now, if I pull it too far to the back, you can see I get the same problem. And even if it's just a little bit, I'm just going to show you here. Like, so here's just a little bit. I'm going to dash this one in to show you. So see what happens is you'd be pulling it in the opposite direction. So what we need to remember is the crotch curve or line or whatever you want to call it, this little thing right here has baggage. It's attached to the entire rest of the leg. So as you swing it back and forth, you're moving the entire pant leg. So I also want to try to illustrate it to you in a 3D manner. So what I want to show you here is, and this is why it's really important to watch what you're doing when you're fitting your pants around your waist from both sides or from the front and the back or the side having two mirrors helps you see. So basically what you want to be able to do is if I'm pulling up my front and this is going to illustrate what I was showing um, with my little my little cutout crotch what happens is if I start to pull up the center front look what happens to the back leg. You can see it's pulling the fabric up with the front waist and I could do I could repeat the same thing if I turn it around and show you that if I pull up the back I can make the front look funky so what's happening here is in the back the crotch curve is already fitting up against the behind but then in the front it might be hard to see but I can probably put two or three fingers between the edge of my front crotch curve and the body. So what happens is you can balance it front to back by doing this, you know, raising it up and down, okay, to a point to get the fabric to hang smoothly. So at this point in fitting, because you're you're pulling it from the top and the bot from the top of the waist, and then you're you know, working along to get everything to hang nicely from the waist. The goal is to get that fabric to hang smoothly front and back. So the amount of pulling it up and down and also front and back is limited to where the crotch curve starts to agree with you. So as you get that crotch into position, whether it be the front or the back, that's going to be the end point for working with adjusting the pattern from the top waistline. Now, let's say, you know, we needed, we needed to pull it up higher in the front, but pulling it up like this, causes, you know, the wrinkling on the back leg, which you can clearly see here. And I'm only pulling it up like not even an inch and you're getting that difference in wrinkle. So what do you do? Well, I'm going to show you. So here's a fresh pair of legs. And what I want to suggest to you here is when you're prepping your pattern, if you give yourself an extra inch allowance in the front and in the back, like this. 
but you sew at your original stitching line. So if this is one inch and you have a half inch built in, your stitching line is going to be over here. Okay, so that's where you're going to stitch, where the red line is. Now as you're working with adjusting the pans from the waist, once you've got it hanging nicely and you can't adjust it from the center front or center back or side seam or along the edge anymore without wrinkling it, the next thing you want to look at is, can I let out a crotch point to allow myself to pull it up higher? Because if I give myself more length here and here, or one or the other depending on your shape, I may be able to pull it up higher and get it into position. So that's the least invasive thing to try when you've gotten it balanced but it's too low in the front or if, if the shape isn't exactly right you, and you need more room, you can extend the crotch extensions. And here's the thing, you want to do all of that before you finish fitting the single leg muslin. You can't have this giant allowance when you sew two legs together because you'll get a glob of fabric at the intersection of the crotch and the inseam. So you want to finalize the fit of the inseam before you move to two legs. So after you've balanced it and maybe try to extend the crotch extensions to get a better fit, once you're happy there, you trim these back down to a half an inch and then you sew your second leg. Once you have your second leg together with the first, you know, the first leg you fit, you'll be able to fine tune the shape of the crotch. For example, it may work out that you need to go a little bit lower in the back, which would also allow you to raise this higher. So if your front crotch is still too low, you know, it may be that you need to come down a little bit like this. So if you, if you can pull it up higher here, you'll be able to pull it up higher there. And by the way, if you're lowering the base of the crotch, what are you doing? You're creating more of a low behind situation. So if your crotch curve in the back is significantly lower than your front crotch curve, doing this will help. Another option would be to fill in the front and I have a tutorial for that and I will show you, but filling this in, you know, and then getting it to sort of agree by matching it at the inseam, let me just cut this so you can see, is another thing you can do. Um, so after you balance that leg by adjusting it like a steering wheel, meaning you're pulling it up and down, but remember, you're dragging the fabric with you, so pay attention to the subtle wrinkles you get as you work with the fabric. The final goal of the pants fitting process is to get that crotch curve to agree with your shape 100%, but you don't get to that point until after you balance the leg by adjusting it from the waist and then from the tips of the crotch. Because being able to adjust the length of your crotch from both ends is going to give you the flexibility to create the right length where you need it. I hope this little canoodling on pants fitting was helpful. I really enjoy thinking about it in different ways and trying to, you know, explain it in different ways because I know everybody learns differently and maybe this explanation might, I don't know, clear it up for you. So if you have any questions or comments about, you know, fitting the crotch and in that very first stage of working with a single leg muslin, please let me know and I will help you because getting it right here will make fitting the two leg muslin so much easier. At that point in the fitting, you should be very close to just fine tuning the shape of the crotch. Thank you guys for watching. If you're enjoying my content, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel because it helps me grow and have a wonderful rest of your day.